So we'll start off uh, with introducing some personas. In this case, uh, Bob Davis. He's a uh, uh, he's a sales associate, and he prefers working in team. And uh, he he likes to create uh, you know business workspaces from from teams. So let's highlight uh, what uh, kind of collaborative capabilities we have in Microsoft Teams. So. Bob uh, will launch the extended ECM Microsoft Team app. Um, he has a new co um, a contract to create, so he will create it, uh, that business the contract or the business workspace directly from Team. Now he knows that certain teams can be synchronized with business workspaces, um, so he starts by creating the contract and filling out data, and putting all the necessary information about the contract type and and what's the status. Um, now, uh, when he presses the save button, a business workspace representing the contract will actually be created in extended ECM, and a new Microsoft team will also be created. Um, now, as you will see in subsequent videos, documents will be synced bidirectionally between the team and the extended ECM business workspace representing that contract. Okay, so we'll see how the team has been created here. And now the contract documents will be synced as we see, uh, as we'll see in, in new videos. We'll switch to Deke. Deke is a, he works with uh, Bob Davis. Uh, he's a contract manager in the legal department for Innovate Paving. Now he likes to work primarily in extended ECM. So we will highlight how he collaborates with Bob from extended ECM. So using the new notification center, Deke receives um, emails about the creation of a new business workspace, right? Now with Notification Center, he can choose the verbosity and the frequency of emails, but in this case, he chose to receive an email for every folder or document that gets created in the business workspace. Now he can choose to get daily daily notifications or, or weekly or so on. Now he can, excuse me, he can view his notification using Smart View. Now Smart View Notification Center has all the modern design paradigms and can intelligently aggregate notifications per business workspace. As you can see here, uh, they're all aggregated per bank sheet uh, paving. Now, Deke can quickly navigate to the contracts folder to start adding contracts, uh, or, or, or you can add documents that pertain to the contract. All right, so let's see how he's going to add and, and continue the collaboration. So Deke is going to add a collection of documents to the folder of the newly created uh, contract. Now all documents added to that folder automatically are assigned a restricted security clearance as per company policy. You see the column there. Now he also notices the blue shared icon on the folder, which tells him that all content added to that folder will be synchronized to Teams so that Bob can collaborate on them using Microsoft Teams. So. Let's see now what Bob can do. So the, the, the documents have been added from Microsoft from Extend ECM, and let's switch to Bob on Microsoft Teams side. Now, Bob will see all the pertinent contract documents have been added to the channel, including the statement of work. Now, using any of the co-authoring features, he edits the statement of work and adds a minimum contract value along with the name of the project and so on. Just, just keeping it small for the purpose of the demo here. Now, um, when he closes the document, all the changes will be saved to his file in Teams. But the, the, the cool thing is that they'll, they'll be also synchronized back to extended ECM as new versions. Now, one thing to note, is the sync engine handles new versions, deletes, renames, and many other events that can occur between the two, pl two platforms. Okay, so let's switch back to Deke. So, and let's see what he could do with intelligent viewing and security clearances, some of the more advanced features of extended ECM, but it's, it's, uh, it's really interesting to see how it all comes together. Now again, using Notification Center, so Deke notices that uh, he gets a message informing him that a new version has been added uh, uh, of the statement of work. That's the one that Bob added. Now he navigates the document directly for the message using the embedded links and observes that version two has been added to the statement of work, as we said. Now using intelligent viewing, he previews the documents. He can add comments or annotations. Now in this case, he notices that the MCV has been added, the 200,000, and as per company procedure, 
MCVs should be redacted, especially when content is shared outside of the um, extended ECM. Now he applies the redaction, and it's really cool guys using this redaction. Um, now he uh, he applies the redaction, and he will publish that as a new PDF uh, file back to that folder. Okay, so he checks that the redaction has been properly applied. See how it's applied here. And of course, he knows that the PDF file will be synchronized to Teams as well. Now, finally, uh, he'll change the security clearance on the original Word file to company confidential. Now, this is important because that will change, that change of security clearance will automatically trigger the unsharing of the file from Teams, and Bob Davis won't have access to that file anymore. As you, see, as you can see, the sync and share integration between extended ECM and core share really is an excellent tool to share, not only with internal colleagues, but external to the organization as well. We see how that file got unshared when we switched the security clearance from Microsoft Teams. That is so cool. Okay, so um, let's talk about landing pages and, and some of the, uh, and here guys, we had to kind of weave in certain parts of the demo. Um, because they were required, not necessarily 100% necessarily fit in, but here we go. So uh, we have talked a lot about collaborating between Teams and extended ECM. So let's have a sneak peek, a sneak peek of what content intelligent features are available to help Deek with his day-to-day -day work. Now, once or twice a day, Deek navigates to the agreements landing page. Now, that landing page contains dashboards and other convenience widgets. He can quickly navigate to certain contracts, and change attributes such as contract stage or contract types. Now, there's also, um, uh, back to the agreements, uh, landing page, there's also visual widgets that in case uh, are configured to show contracts by type or contracts by stage. Again, it's nice to be able to drill into these reports for more detailed contract information. Thank you, Pat. Note that this landing page and the entire configuration of contracts is available as a business scenario. Business scenarios are turnkey prepackaged solutions that are ready to use with minimal configuration. And, and this is awesome, actually kind of cool. They can be used as is or modified. Now our customers uh, use them to quickly ramp up and use their extended, uh, to, 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 to use their extended ECM investment quickly. So this is all, um, slight modifications of the business scenario that um, Alexandra ships. In this case, it's the agreement business scenario. Let's talk about social graphs. Again, um, let's see what we have here. We've made some some pretty cool um, um, <clears throat> advancements here, and this this demos very nicely. So, uh, Deek again, uh, legal wants to know who has expertise in sales contracts. Now, using the social and knowledge chart. Deke can see who has interacted with sales contracts in extended ECM. Now, uh, the colors indicate the area of expertise. The size of the circle indicates the number of contract interactions. And the thickness of the line between users indicate the number of uh, uh, interactions. If you click on Nick Wheeler, you'll see that his area of expertise is sales. And then uh, um, you see other interactions, you can notice that um, you know, it settles into where uh, the most has been used. So it's pretty cool. I think it's something we could definitely build on. Um, and this was kind of the first time we ever demoed something like this. So that was pretty uh, visual. Let's see what kind of data governance features that um, are available to DEEK. Now, there's a my assignment widget. D clicks on the data governance review task, which will list all of the documents flagged by Magellan as containing sensitive PII. Now, he can view the documents and act on them. He also has control of the quarterly disposition for physical items. Now, his job is to review and approve whether they can be destroyed or not. So, um, this is kind of the, the, the smart view way of uh, looking for um, <clears throat> disposable items. Um, and in this case, he notes that boxes are marked as legal and realizes that they are part of legal audit and applies a legal hold on them so that they won't get disposed of.
Finally, let's see what, what we can do with UI customization. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, visual uh, um, uh, presence, a lot of widgets. Let's see how easy it is to customize the UI. Now, finally, Deke finds that some of the widgets and the content on the landing page is not optimized, so he decides to customize the landing page uh, by removing some of the unnecessary shortcuts and add other uh, widgets, such as, in this case, recently uh, access widget, and we'll see how easy it is to add that to, the, um, to his customized page. And I believe that is a wrap. Thank you.